What's going on, everyone? So, Kelvin Johnson has been putting in some work this offseason, uh, kind of reshaping, toning his body, you know, cutting down on some of the fat. You know, I've even seen some of the, the comments over the time of just like, ah, he needs to lose some weight, needs to do this, needs to do that. Well, it looks like he is in the lab doing that very thing. Uh, he's been working out, doing all these drills. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see what ultimately happens with Keldon Johnson. He has, you know, he had the little, I don't even know if you'd call it controversy. It is a little silly thing over the jersey, right? Keldon Johnson, he said uh, on uh, like a radio interview, something like that, that basically he's going to keep number three. He's that That's his number. He's keeping it. Um, but it was like, well, Chris Paul's number three. So what's going to happen? Chris Paul was expected to wear number three. Did something happen? Like, what is going on? Did they have a talk? Um, but supposedly now Keldon Johnson um, is going to wear number zero uh, based on reports that have came out. Basically, Greg Popovich pulled Keldon Johnson aside and said, you know, hey, you know, it, it's the right thing to do. You got to do this. You got to respect the vet. Right. He's a legend. You're not giving it to just some random guy. You're giving it to Chris Paul, right? So you got to give up the number. So ultimately, looks like he caved in that regard. Um, but he has been heavy in just trade rumors and trade discussions and conversations. And the Spurs have been very active in trying to move him uh, this past offseason. They even tried to put a package around him to go get a Lori Mark in it. So you know, with Keldon Johnson, it kind of feels... As if it's a matter of when, not if, he gets traded, right? That sooner or later, eventually, he's going to end up on, on, on the outside looking in, and he's going to be in another team. Just kind of like, where does he fit? And I am very curious about this season, how much will he actually, how much opportunity will he really get, right? He's already been relegated to the bench as like a sixth man, which is fine. That's kind of more his skill set. You know, there's a lot of talk about him being very selfish and stuff and, you know, can be a little pouty and stuff, which is one of the reasons why him not wanting to give Chris Paul the number three kind of became a big deal, even though I don't think it was that big of a deal. But it kind of became a big deal because it's, you know, Keldon Johnson kind of has this perception of like, you know, he can be a little selfish at times. Um, but, you know, he look, he, he's putting in the work. And that's what you want to see from him. Still incredibly young. He is an excellent scorer. Defensively, a little bit of an issue. But if you just want a guy that can go get you 15 to 20 plus a night off the bench, Kelvin Johnson's definitely a guy that could go do that. Right? Like in the right situation, the right environment, and maybe that's with the Spurs, right? I mean, we've seen lots of players that were that looked like they were inevitably gonna be traded, inevitably gonna be moved actually end up sticking around with the team and actually not end up getting traded and end up, you know, even finishing the career. I mean, we've heard so many stories of players that were, you know, uh, basically moments away from being traded and then ultimately weren't. You know, and if Keldon Johnson kind of buys into the team and buys into whatever role is given of him and, you know, he continues to show what he's shown this offseason of just kind of, you know, cutting down and, and you know, trimming some of the body fat and, better conditioning his body, right? The videos that were posted, I mean, he's doing all kinds of strength and conditioning training. He's, you know, in a pool, he's running and doing drills on a, on a football field, right? Like he's, he's taking this off season very serious. And I'm, it's not to say that he hasn't taken off season serious in the past, but you know, he's, you can see he's really like, he's really putting it in an overdrive. He's really putting in the effort and that go a long way for Keldon Johnson. I mean, even, whether it's with the Spurs or not, Right, like you know, you you want you want to have longevity in this league. You want to be a, a player that's not just this. Oh, oh yeah, remember Keldon Johnson? Like, oh, he was like a random spur, right? Like, no, you want it to be something where, you know, whether it's with the Spurs or not, you are remembered. You have this legacy, and you got to work for that. Right? It doesn't just come. And Keldon Johnson is very talented. He, he's again, he go get buckets with the best of them. Right. But he's got a he's not he's if he was on any other team besides the Spurs, he'd probably be a better fit. He probably would be maybe even more recognized. And 
it's not because like oh there's like players don't get recognized in the Spurs or anything like that no like Spurs are uh, you know a legacy franchise but it's just Spurs have this standard have you know this system this this you know kind of foundation you know the the you know Spurs culture right and then like Keldon Johnson is kind of like you know kind of the opposite in a lot of ways right like Pop and the Spurs have always liked kind of do everything guys, right? Yeah, Tony Parker was a point guard, but he did a little bit of everything. He did the dirty work. He hustled, right? He'd make plays. He'd hit shots. He, you know, he wasn't just like, oh, I just can score and or I could just pass or whatever, right? Manu, you know, even Timmy. And, you know, you just go through the history. Even guys you know, like Bruce Bowen and Steven Jackson and all these guys, right? Like, there's been kind of like that that molded player that you know Greg Popovich really likes those Spurs culture type guys and you know Keldon Johnson it's just there's a lot of questions basically since he was brought into the Spurs is he a guy that is capable of kind of fitting into the Spurs culture but in his defense he's also a guy that came in got the green light and was looked at to kind of just carry the offensive workload and he did it. He did great, right? Like, he was, he was solid, right? And so, you know, you, you kind of just let him play his, his way for several seasons. And then now it's like, okay, well, now we got Chris Paul. Now we got Stephon Castle. Now we got Victor Wimanyama. Now we got Devin Vassell. Now we got, you know, all these guys. Start Harrison Barnes. Kind of go down the list, and it's like, okay, well, now we need you to kind of buy in. We need you to slot in. We need you to, you know, kind of fit in where you get in type thing and, and be a Spurs guy. And Calvin Johnson's like, dude, I was just averaging 22, 23 a game, you know, not, you know, season and a half of a season ago, right? Two seasons ago, whatever, right? Like, it's just, no, he's looking at it as like, oh, look, I'm a young bucket getter, right? Like, I'm this young buck that could just, you know, do a little bit of everything, right? Like, but, I, I'm curious to see how much of the opportunity is actually there, right? Because he's not going to get his, more likely than not, he's not going to get his 15, you know, 16 field goal attempts per game. Because now, again, Chris Paul is going to be taking attempts. Harrison Barnes is going to be taking attempts. Stephon Castle is probably going to be taking attempts. Right? Devin Vassell is going to get his attempts because he's a starting two guard. And then you have Victor Wimanyama, who, you know, he's the, the number one option. He's the focal point. He's going to be getting his 20 attempts per game and all that stuff, right? Like, you just kind of go down the pecking order, and it's like, you know, is Keldon Johnson, how many how many attempts is he going to get? How big of a... How, many, how big of a focal point is he going to be for the Spurs on the offensive side? You know, are they going to just kind of give him, maybe they do, maybe they do give him the green light. Maybe they do tell him like, hey, when you're out there, you got the ball, go get a bucket. That's why you're there. That's why you're the six men. It's not why you're not starting. You know, because, I mean, that's what you want from, you want that scorer off the bench. You want that guy that can go get you, you know, 15 to 20 on any given night. You know, and look, Tell you what you want about Kel Johnson, man. When he gets cooking, he's he's up there, man. That dude can score with the best of them. Especially when he's on and he's feeling it. He's kind of in the moment and in that zone. He is, he's, he can be special, right? Like, but can he do it consistent? Can he do it game in and game out? And can he do it within the confines of what the Spurs are looking and trying to do this year? Yes, this year is a big development year. Right? It's why you got Chris Paul at his age and, you know, you end up getting uh, Harrison Barnes and stuff, right? Like, you, you, you don't get those guys unless you're looking at them to help grow and develop guys like a Keldon Johnson, right? And so, you know, is he going to be willing to buy in? Is he going to really listen to that? But also, you know, there 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 is expectations of you need to be better. Right, and Keldon Johnson, yeah, he was going and getting you 20-plus, but he wasn't really translating to wins. Now, not like Spurs had this, like, great roster. You know, so it's not just on Keldon Johnson, but now you're in, a, you're in a different position. And now there is this expectation of, like, hey, we need to we need to start winning some games here. We need to start putting some wins together. We, we, we don't want to win 22 games again, right? We're, we're looking to... 
you know, try to get and squeeze into the play-in or the playoffs, right? And Keldon Johnson, you know, he's a guy that has the potential, in my opinion, to be a big piece. He has the potential, in my opinion, to, to really be a guy that can have an impact out there on the basketball court. He's a guy that, in my opinion, can can provide not only that, just the scoring burst. Obviously, he's a guy that can score the basketball, but, you know, pose a threat out there when you need it, right? Like, hey, you know, the offense is down a little bit. Let's throw Keldon Johnson in there and let him do his thing. And, again, hopefully he's more willing to make plays and, you know, not, not just be this linear player and scorer, right? Because there is a lot of potential in there, in my opinion. Can he just figure it all out? Can he get it all together is the question. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Past question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, you excited for Keldon Johnson? What do you think of his uh, kind of transformation um, as is being tooted as? Uh, do you think that he's due for a big season this year? Do you think like, nah, you know, he's going to end up ultimately being traded? Get it however you feel. Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos. Truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.